I would like to bring this meeting of the school committee to order. I want to welcome everybody who's here. I want to welcome our viewers on television. And I'd like you all to join with me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the first item on our agenda this evening is a very enjoyable agenda item because we get to meet some very talented young boys and girls from the school system and their families. So uh, Dr. Maestas, I can turn it over to you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming tonight. Um, this is a very special night, as Dr. Sorensen had indicated. As you have probably noticed, in the halls of 11 Lincoln Street, we have a variety of art displays on the first and second floor. And that work is selected and uh, displayed for several months. And I know many of you have come through the halls to actually take pictures of the artwork. I can tell you that a lot of adults that are not associated with anyone in this room have noticed the beauty in the, in the artwork. And sometimes people ask if the artwork is for sale. So we, we may have to put some price tags on these things and some of the some of the kids may want to consider they could probably make some college money, but um, we're just so honored and pleased tonight to be able to recognize them for their contributions, not only to uh, the school system and their artwork, but to the beauty of this facility. For when people come in here, it's just nice to have a representation of our students uh, here in this building. So I'm going to come up front uh, with Ms. Hunt, and we're going to call uh, the names of the students that are here tonight. Uh, the students that are not here tonight will still get a certificate. They will be delivered to their schools. Um, and this uh, meeting is live on um, our Ed Television Network here in Plymouth. And it is seen throughout through many communities and is also recorded and online. So uh, you can share it with uh, all the grandparents and uncles and aunts and you can forward it everywhere so they can actually see um, your children receiving an honor tonight. So we'll come up and give the awards and uh, thank you for your patience tonight. Test, test, test. Hold on one second. There we go. We're good, right? All right. So we're going to start off with uh, uh, Plymouth North High School and Amelia Palastri. And we're going to PCIS, Andrew LeBay. Andrew. Uh, Jaden Zabalikowski. Adam Moscato. John Donatellis. Jordan Christopher. Noah Kerr. Molly Lutz. Allison Costa. <laughs> Catherine Hawkins, Federal Furnace Elementary. <laughs> Lila Shea. <laughs> Savannah Kenny. Adeline Davis, Nathaniel Morton Elementary. <laughs> Daniel Lucan. <laughs> Charles Rimbaldi. <laughs> Anastasios Paganis. <laughs> Jeff Hunt. 
Kayla Enos. <laughs> South Elementary, Isabella Gibbs. <laughs> Abigail Sharath. <laughs> Raylan Fosquette. Uh, Madman Elementary, Ashlyn Cadetti. <laughs> Haley Christopher. <laughs> Isabella Rush. <laughs> Elizabeth Politis. Madeline Bilbo. <laughs> Connor Whitting, Madeline. <laughs> Rise Adair, Madeline. <laughs> Hunter Hutchinson. <laughs> Madison Mack. Megan Fireman. <laughs> Kendall Currig. <laughs> Aslan Merkin. West Elementary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yavani Gonzalez. <laughs> Eliza Anzora. West Elementary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hedge Elementary, Alexandria Kepler. <laughs> Shay Robertson. <laughs> Isabel Azule. <laughs> Caroline Buckley. Kevin Cotty. And Plymouth South High School, Angelina Andrews. I want to thank you all for coming tonight, showing your support for your children, and also support for the Plymouth Public Schools. And welcome to our new office. This is the first time that we do this presentation here. Uh, it's tight quarters, but it's an awesome night for you to be here. So thank you so much, and have a great evening. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask all of you to join with me in a moment of silence in our support for the sisters and family, and in our respect for their grief, and to wish them and to send them as much positive energy as we can send them. So please join with me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Is there anybody attending tonight's meeting who isn't on the agenda and who would like to speak to the school committee? If so, please come forward to the table and identify yourself. Yeah. And there is a microphone. Yep, we got the microphones. Great. Good evening, Kristen Uratory. Colleen Cadrico. Catherine Huxley. And we are here tonight to present to the board an idea that Colleen and I have been <coughs> back and forth about. It's an after prom party at Plymouth South High School, which would take place on May 8th, this year is on May 8th, and it would be from 11.30 p.m. to 5 o'clock a.m. next day. And the idea is to keep these kids off the road, to provide a alcohol-free, drug-free environment to make memories for them. Uh, 
I, I, I sort of took the concept from a couple of places. Marshfield, Marshfield has yeah. a after graduate graduation, graduation party. party. And Falmouth High School has an after prom party. And I came from Falmouth. They didn't have it back then. <laughs> but um, they've, they're going 25 years plus strong. And it's been very successful. And actually, I sent a link to Peg. Thank you. She was kind enough to, but I'll get, I can get to that. But um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it first. And it's, it's the idea of I had a child who went to the prom last year, and it was the big talk was what do we do after the prom? I, I think that there was a lot of folk, too much focus on that not necessarily for all the right reasons. So I discussed it with Colleen, and I said, what about doing something similar to the Marshfield, but in an after prom concept? And then I talked to this Kathleen Jesperson, who is the Falmouth, who initiated the Falmouth um, after prom party. And we thought it was a great idea, so we called Dr. Han Mr. Hanna, and there was a couple of teachers Tammy, the elder, come on up here. <laughs> she thought she was getting out of this. <coughs> so Tammy, we asked Tammy and Melissa, Jane Pedro, to help out. Um, so they were a great support. <coughs> Once they heard our ideas, they uh, sort of came on board and missed a hearing and they supported it. Along with the advisors there. You guys are the advisors of the junior class, right? So. So Tammy was kind enough to sort of get some feedback from the kids, the junior class. And I'll let you talk about that. And I'll get to Catherine Lapsley in a minute. <laughs> we did a survey in the junior class, and we asked the kids um, you know, who would definitely go, who would, I mean, Alex was part of the junior class as well, so, um, and she's been involved in a lot of our discussions at our student council meetings. Uh, who would definitely go, who was somewhat interested, who you know, was on the fence, and then who definitely would not go. Um, the support was slower, definitely lower than we um, anticipated, I think, for the juniors. Um, we've had a couple of good follow-up discussions, though, um, since then. Um, I think there's definitely some kids that are interested in it, but I think um, our first initial meeting, there's some of the kids that are um, overwhelming majority who might be interested in other activities after, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but I think there is definitely a small group that's interested. It's one of those things. Um, I went to high school in Marshfield, actually, and um, she was referring to Marshfield's grad night. Um, I was probably like the fourth or fifth year that they had that. Um, and it was something that everybody attended. It was like one of those, you know, 90% of the student body shows up. So I think it's one of those things that if you start, um, you know, you might be small at the beginning, you build it, um, and it starts to grow as it becomes part of the culture of the school, definitely. Um, I know it is something that the juniors more recently, and Alex might be able to speak to this a little bit too, um, have talked about that they would be more interested in sort of after prom to do it after graduation. So that is something the kids have said. Um, I know it was something we kind of initially had talked about a little bit too. Um, so I think it's something that you know definitely has a place maybe. Um, and I think that it could be a really good deterrent. I think maybe you know, some of the recent events that we've seen that have impacted our community um, in the last summer, the last year, the last week even. Um, that's something we can follow a little bit more. Oh, Alex, do you have anything to add to that? Um, so I know a few of the like worries for people were that we have for the people that take AP US history, that's the exam date. And so they might already be really tired to have to go to the party afterwards. But I also know a lot of people that said that they definitely go because it was seemed like it would be a lot of fun. But I don't know if that's speaking towards the people that would not be going to those parties afterwards or so it's kind of. And Timmy, I don't know if you know how the prom date is picked. That is like with that in mind, with the AP exams or whatever. It's kind of something that goes back to Mrs. Fry and myself about yeah. 10 years ago or so. Um, we always try to work around the kids' needs, and um, we also work around Plymouth North and Plymouth South. You know, a lot of the kids go to each other's proms, so we both the schools collaborate on that. And then also, um, we found that that time of the year, the kids like better because there's not everything going on with graduation because the junior prom can get lost in the senior activities. So that's why we always pit stuck with that time of the year. And we then everything, it's picked, I mean, it's like planning, I joked with Tammy, she's the best prom planner around. And it's like planning a wedding. You plan it a year out, the date, all the logistics. And we're very 
I was I should speak I was very strict on the keeping the price down and things like that so um, it's really about space it's it's like planning a large event a year in advance but that May date has been a good time because the kids go to DECA right after April vacation usually so we try to make it so that all kids no matter what activity they're involved in have access to it so it's not when there's there's no sports that day there's no you know we really shut down the school but things like DECA were a major factor in our planning with both high schools too so and keep away from memorial date? yep we know yeah. that yep know that ahead of time yes the yep we so do yep is North's prom impacted by AP? it's all it's all case by case so the AP tests all end well before the prom so it depends on the date itself so we North used to have an issue with it being before um, it's, every year there's a prom date issue um, with Memorial Day weekend and we listen to the parents and change that um, we work with the AP dates there's AP dates from we have the calendar well in advance we know when that is but it's something that depending on the amount of kids taking that AP test some aren't junior APs it may be a senior <coughs> AP I sound like a high school principal again um, so if it's a senior AP usually that's around the prom and things like that so it's a lot goes into the date itself to if, long story short there's a lot of juggling yep <laughs> And we've done things with the, yeah. And we've done things with the when an AP test comes up, um, we allow a parent to dismiss them or like. There's lots of things you can do. There's alternate dates. There's a lot of flexibility because we know so far in advance. Doctor so. Maestas, you know one one of the things, and I know, uh, Ms. Miratori, we we haven't talked about this um, recently. Uh, I was talking to Catherine. I I, I was at, at lunch with her today, uh, and. We actually, uh, through Dr. Campbell, wrote a grant about four or five years ago to do an after prom event. And we landed up um, receiving the grant, but it actually didn't get funded because the provider of the grant felt that it wasn't a research-based model that we would roll out. So we landed up using the grant for another opportunity in the district. We actually had, um, couple of presenters come in from other communities Dartmouth was one of them and they again like you said it takes years to build to build so uh, one of the things that we had discussed back then was how do you make this the thing to do where everyone wants to come where it's not just a few people come Oh, they do. That's linked to the film club together yeah. we can. Whether it's prizes for a thousand dollars, prizes for yeah. TVs. It's a production. It's, it's a production. To get the incentive to these kids to come, yeah. and they can't win unless they're there. Sure, mm -hmm. so sure. Obviously so obviously, yeah. So it's yeah. just we're trying to come up with incentives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As Tammy said, and as mm -hmm. Danny said, it's gonna grow. It's got it. Yeah, you it gotta start somewhere. about prom versus graduation has come up quite mm -hmm. a bit mm -hmm. um, and I was more for graduation and then I kind of shifted over to prom but when we talked about that even with Mr. Hannah had the point too of like kids are still going to attend graduation parties for weeks out maybe months yeah. out so mm -hmm. we can't control all of that but that prom is that one night where we yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. we can maybe have yeah, some yeah. control over yeah. the situation. I think one piece, um, when I was a vice principal at Barnstable High School, they have a pretty successful celebration as theirs. And um, I remember the I was there the first year it started, and they really sold it to the kids throughout the year. So they'd come in when there was a class assembly going on already, and a, a mom would come in and say, by the way, hey, you can win a gift certificate to San Diego. It sounds corny, but it gets them talking, and the key to high school kids getting them to events is talking, talking, talking to them about it, and getting it, Tammy's nodding her head. But I think it really is neat, and I agree with Colleen that graduation, the most parties are not that day. Usually, they're family dinners or whatnot, and mm -hmm. they tend to go. They go the whole month of 
They go the whole summer. The whole summer. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, the whole summer. so I think that's something to point I, out I, as you've well. Been, we've been talking here for a few minutes mm -hmm. about uh, how to get them to come, and that's a very important conversation. But let's not cross, let's not jump over the need. The need is huge. Mm -hmm. and let me, and I'm going to get a lot of trouble for telling you a story that I'm going to tell you right now. But this is a true story. And I have five sons, so you can't figure out which one did it. <laughs> but we were having an after prom party at my house, and they all showed up for the after prom party, and they dropped all their stuff off, got dressed, and left, and went to the girl's house to have all their pictures taken. While they were at, at the girl's house having their pictures taken, I went through all their stuff. And I found all their alcohol. I then collected all their alcohol, drove to the house where they were all lined up having their pictures taken, and gave it back to the parents, like this. And those kids were not smiling in those pictures. But I tell you that story because it is a real need. It's a real need to get the alcohol and the drugs away from proms. So I think it's wonderful. So the kids were aware of it. Mm -hmm. So, and then it sort of became stagnant a little bit as we were trying to work through a 501c3 that we wanted to join with. And that's where we bring Catherine into this, which is the Public Education Foundation. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, or you want me to sort of... Um, you can talk a little bit more. So we right. met with the Public Education Foundation board, and they were just, again, same thing, conversations that we just talked about, like showed them a video, something in the video ahead of time. And they had, a, they had a board meeting and were very excited about it and very supportive about it. So we wanted to, and the reason why we're doing this is to help them and for them to help us. Because contributions, which we're going to seek sponsors and we're going to seek donations, we want a tax exempt mm -hmm. contribution. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, hopefully the one of the Education Foundation can benefit and then we can benefit as well. Yeah, for us, we thought it would get our name out there. I'm going to pull that microphone over. For us, we thought it would get our name out there a little bit more. Um, the Plymouth, I'm here representing the Plymouth Education Foundation. And um, they came and gave us this presentation, and we thought it was a great idea. And to get it started, um, I think you thought that maybe it would take a year or two. Or so the reason years. why we didn't go through the 501c3 process now is because we don't know how this is going to go. As we see the feedback from the kids is it's a little you know, lighter level. So I think we want to sort of test the waters and see how it goes before we spend the cost and have the cost of the time uh, going through the 501c3 process. So that's the ultimate goal. Okay. So I think this relationship, you know, right. I think it will be temporary for a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it just means it will be a successful event okay. to get to that. So Do you want to show us the video? Please. Okay. So this is Falmouth's after prom.
잡셔야지. 
um, from here where you know everybody just went to grad night mm -hmm. and that was the thing. Here I know that there, um, the first time I mentioned it at our student council meeting, there was a lot of pushback from more outspoken students. I'd say more mm -hmm. kids are more comfortable talking in front of a group, and um, it was, you know, we don't want to do that. And then afterwards, I, you know, I coach JV field hockey. I go to practice, and I'm walking down, and a couple of random students, you know, pull me aside, and a couple of girls at practice um, say, "Hey, you know what? I know some people were saying that, but I think there's more people that would actually be interested in going." Mm -hmm. Then those were the kids who weren't maybe necessarily comfortable speaking up in front of the and I think that's more of what Alex is getting at a little bit too. Um, that kids are interested. You know, we had an officers meeting the day after, and um, Alex was part of the conversation where we were like, "No, I think actually more people would be interested, but maybe it's not the popular thing at the time." Um, and I think it's just kind of getting those kids and getting, um, like I said earlier, about building the culture of getting kids interested and kids going to that and talking about how great it is. It might start small the first year, mm -hmm. and that might just be how it has to be. Um, but as people talk about it next year, hey, this was so much fun, we did this, we got this, we got this prize, then it just builds from there. And I think that really might be how you have to start to hook the kids that way a little bit. And would it, does it have to be in the school? Could it be uh, at another place? Or? Um, that's a good question. I know um, basically like what we have talked about with Mr. Hannah is that um, you know, this committee is separate from the school, from the junior class. Mm -hmm. You know, we will be at the prom, running the prom at Indian Pond and all of that, that night. And this is something that's going to be parent focused, parent run. Um, and I know a lot of like Falmouth and Marshfields are completely um, out of the hands of the administration, the staff and everything. They are all focused on parents. And um, I think that's something that's going to have to be done. But not so with parents of the juniors, parents of other kids. And so that they're getting involved, maybe as their sophomores, and then next year they're hoping that people get back when their kids are juniors and so forth. Um, so again, it becomes more of like a community involvement um, situation and a lot of that, um, it doesn't have to be at the school necessarily. I feel like most of the ones that I've known of in this area are at the schools. I would think you guys could probably speak to that. I think you've researched, I think. Yeah, so, well, I, well, I, I one thing I wanted to mention was that I know in Marshfield the junior um, parents aren't really even allowed because they want the kids to feel, or the seniors, because they do grad night, they want the kids to feel comfortable mm -hmm. and not have their parents watching them. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I think that would be our request, obviously. If you were recruiting parents for volunteers, they could come in and do the setup piece, mm -hmm. but then you're, you're going to go if your kid's here. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think it's, it's selling the parents a mm -hmm. little bit, right? Like, you really shouldn't be hosting an after mm -hmm. prom yeah. party, and you should be looking at, like, let's, let's encourage this mm -hmm. because this is a healthier choice and a, and a better choice overall. Um, and you really don't want that liability mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a big piece of it that we have to also focus on is hooking the kids, but hooking our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that obviously kids are a little more heightened right now and families are a little more heightened. Um, and so I think it's, it's a providing an opportunity that, that takes some of that fear and, and um, you know, risk away. The only thing I'd add to that is I know Sacred Heart did theirs years ago at the Boys and Girls Club. So, I don't know. We don't have a lot of time. Okay. Uh, January, 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 but, but the thanks for coming here tonight and, and sharing it with us. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope it goes well. If we can help out, let us know. Well, you're all signed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, we would just Dr. say we wouldn't Estes. last past midnight. So. <laughs> 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 Maybe we can help yeah. beforehand. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, how about the setup? <laughs> well, yeah, because there are going to be the kids that want to crash that yeah. aren't going to be able to leave. So, yeah. Dr. Mayes, and I, I just like to recognize the Education Foundation for their support to really see how they can partner to help this move along, and it's a great idea. It, as as yeah. we learned tonight, there's a lot of pieces that need to be put together, and Catherine Lapsley is from the foundation, and she has a special announcement tonight. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our gala that's coming up. That's our main fundraising event and it is going to be held on February 8th from 6 to 11 at Waverly Oaks. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with us but we do provide grants to the public schools and other organizations and scholarships um, to the children and um, 
some of the recent grants we've given is a $5,000 grant to uh, so that kids who otherwise couldn't afford to take a trip abroad or um, they might be able to afford it with some assistance from um, the Education Foundation and also a $2,000 grant for an anti-vaping program that's coming up. So we're doing a lot of good stuff and we just you know want to make sure everybody is aware of us. Do you want to repeat the date of the gala again? It's February 8th it's from 6 to 11 at Waverly Oaks. Okay, thank you. And, Dr. Uh, Masters. And, uh, Former uh, Superintendent Barry Haskell is the recipient of the Adele Manfredi Award um, mm -hmm. this year, so um, mm -hmm. it's kind of full circle. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful event. We've attended many, many years. Okay. We go. We usually go. Yeah. Yeah. It does a lot of good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for thank coming you. here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else attending tonight's meeting who would like to address the school committee who isn't already on the agenda? <coughs> I don't see any other hands. I'm now going to move to our student <coughs> representatives, and we will start with North. Hello. Thank you for having me in the new year. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday break. With that being said, there will be important guidance help for seniors. As early action deadlines have come and gone, regular decision deadlines are gro growing closer. The counseling office will be holding four college workshops to help. The workshops will focus on the following getting a refresher on the application process, helping students get started on the Common application, completing necessary steps by the Common app, Naviance, and College Board in order to complete the application process, organizing application and financial aid deadlines and forms required, submitting SAT test scores, therefore students will have to bring a credit card, completing community college applications. If you have not st started yet, or if you have started, but would like a counselor to check what you have done so far in order to determine if you are on the track or missing any steps, please join us on the following dates. The dates are Tuesday, January 7th, Thursday, January 9th, Tuesday, January 14th, <coughs> Thursday, January 16th, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Also, seniors, please check Naviance for up-to-date deadlines and scholarship information. The Plymouth North Plymouth High School's local scholarship application is now available for all seniors to apply. The scholarship can be accessed through Naviance and is due January 31st. Also, the Massachusetts ELK scholarships are available online. These applications are due January 15th, 2020. <coughs> that was a lot <laughs> of information, so make sure your kids are prepared. Next is the High School Showcase and Text Expo. The Plymouth High School Showcase and Text Expo will be held on Monday, January 13th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. This event is for current eighth graders and parents. We will open our doors to the class of 2024 to showcase their tech program options and highlight the different programs across our many departments. Our presentation to parents will take place in the pack from 545 to 615. I remember my first tech, tech expo and I would highly recommend parents to current students as well to consider the rare experience that these tech programs offer. Final exams will, be, will begin Tuesday 21st and end Friday January 24th. The final exams will be for half semester classes only. First semester will end and grades <coughs> will close on Friday January 24th. The second semester will begin on Monday Jan January 27th. Report cards will be distributed on Friday, January 31st. All students will, arri will arrive home um, from school with their report cards. The sale and cap gowns will begin on fr February 4th and run through February 29th. Orders can be placed before or after school in Ms. Allen's room 331. The cost is $25 check or money order, only made payable to PNHS SAF. So that's the Plymouth North High School Student Activities Fund. Again, that is PNHS SAF. The PNHS Winter Acapella Concert is approaching. Please join us at, for the PNHS Winter Acapella Concert on February, January 17th at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at pnhs-sings.com or at the door for $5, and students are three. Trust me, the VPA along with the students have dedicated a lot of time and effort into their performances. So don't miss out. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that's good. Now South, please. Good evening and Happy New Year to all the school committee members and central office administration. 
Coming out of the holiday recess, I would like to update you on our up and coming notable events and past highlights. But before doing so, I would like to say a special thank you to members of the Plymouth community who are out to attend the candlelight vigil that was held last evening at Brewster Gardens in Plymouth in memory of 13 year old Claire Zisserson who was killed in a tragic ac accident. Claire was attending Rising Tide and her family lives in the South District. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Zisserson family as well as the Zimoto family as their daughter, daughter Kendall is, was also in the accident and is still in crit critical condition. Um, our Plymouth South High School chorus combined with Plymouth South Middle School for an amazing night of music prior to the holiday recess. Thank you to the choral directors and students for a fun night of holiday cheer enjoyed by all. Our guidance counselors are currently presenting college and career Naviance readiness curriculums to grade nine and 10 health classes. The Naviance College and Career Readiness Curriculum is a blended learning solution for students to develop knowledge and confidence so that they can start to create their long-term college and career goals. Students and parents are reminded to check their Naviance accounts for new scholarships as well as college admission visits. 2019 through 2020 National Honor Society applications were due today and will be inducting 74 new members on January 23rd. The applicants will receive their acceptance letters this week. We are excited to announce that we will be welcoming approximately 10 to 12 students from China to audit courses again this year. They will be arriving January 10th and again will, prov will prove to be a very enriching experience for our students. Our grade 10 students who have entered a college career and technical program from either the waitlist or a new application this year will be taking their 10 hour OSHA classes this week. All CCTE students will graduate with a safety credential from their respective shop. The annual North and South Winter Captain's Breakfast will take place Tuesday morning at Plymouth South beginning at 8.30 a.m. Our Culinary Arts Department will cater breakfast. This season, we are excited to welcome back North graduate Jacob Burkhead as our guest speaker. Jake is a UMass Dartmouth first multiple year academic All-American. We are excited to have Jacob speak at this event. The English department is in a full competition mode as students compete in the Poetry Out Loud contest semifinals this week and the finals at January 26th, 29th in the Black Box Theater at 5.30 p.m. The High School Academics Showcase and Tech Expo is coming up on January 13th for grade eight parents. Both high schools will have parent presentations presentations regarding the grade nine program of studies along with opportunities to visit each CCTE program. Information was sent home this past week from both schools and CCTE. Families are reminded that next Wednesday is an early release day for our students as well as staff. Staff will attend choice professional development sessions. We have a variety of offerings that our faculty can choose from. A big night of hockey is coming up as South will take on North and Boys Hockey next Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. at Armstrong Rink. Also, congratulations to Strickland Davis and Hannah, Hannah Masterson as they are the Plymouth South <coughs> Old Colony Memorial Male and Female Student Athletes of the Year. And finally, from a student's perspective, I would like to add that the sophomore class will be holding a winter dance, a semi-formal, on January 25th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, both of you. Those are good reports. I am going to take an agenda item out of order here. Just before we start with school, let me take the overnight field trip. Dr. Maestas? Yes, tonight we have an overnight field trip. Um, this is a Plymouth North High School field trip, and this is for the first uh, robotics competition, which is at Worcester Polytechnic, and it's the Northeast District. And tonight uh, we have Carl Nielsen is here to answer any questions that you may have. This is um, pretty much an annual uh, opportunity. It's an overnight, so it comes before you for okay. that purpose. Carl. Nice this school committee. Thank you for having me. Is there anything about the trip you want to highlight? I noticed we haven't done it in the last couple of years. Right. Um, so this this trip um, may not have been presented to the school committee. I guess uh, two years ago, I was a um, a volunteer mentor, and we did this exact trip uh, to Worcester Polytech 
uh, two years past, um, and it was very successful. So um, we chose this particular trip because it is local, um, and it is also held on a weekend, so the students won't have to miss any school, which is a, which is a great opportunity um, to have a very high-level competition, uh, being at Worcester Polytech. Uh, it's one of the premier events, um, but also held over the weekend, which is great, so. Okay. Committee members, any questions? I'm not seeing any hands. We could take a vote on this. Ms. Badger? Move that we approve the field trip as presented. As requested. Is there a second? Mr. Morgan, is there a second? Any question on the motion? Okay, we'll take that vote. I lost, I lost contact, so uh, has everybody voted in favor? Yes. Um, except you. Except you. Except me. Well, I'm voting in favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's unanimous. No, that's, I'm going to have to reboot. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can you just sit logged in? Okay, I'm back on. Thank you. Uh, and now we have... Uh, our school improvement plan, Dr. Maestas. Yes, tonight we are honored to have uh, West Elementary School uh, the school improvement plan is uh, the action plan the second year and we have Principal Williams is here with the school uh, improvement uh, council they're here tonight to present to you so we have a lot of chairs up here so uh, you're more than welcome to come on up welcome good evening everybody and welcome Was there a memo about red and burgundy? Yeah, probably it's the school colors. Probably. <laughs> Let me guess, the school colors have red in them. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, hello, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure and my honor to present to you our second year cycle of our three year school improvement plan. This is my seventh year as the principal at West Elementary and my seventh opportunity to present this to you this evening. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. I'd like to introduce our school council members, Heather Reichel, uh, Carolyn Carmen, Nicole Costa, Christine uh, Sheehan, and we have Leanne Pyatt, Shelley Terry, Gail Kershaw, and myself. So we will go through this presentation giving you updates. You'll see it's very color-coded. I hope it's intuitive to you, so it will be green if we're on target with the goal. Yellow, we made some progress, but still working towards the goal. And then red, we have not met that goal yet. So if there are any questions, feel free to ask, and we'd be happy to field anything, concerns, or questions you have. So I will hand it off to Heather. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'm starting off with goal number one, which is the enhanced student social and emotional growth, health and welfare, and demonstration of civic <laughs> responsibility. So in Number 1A, you see there, second step social competency program, 100% of the West uh, Elementary faculty, they have been trained on the second step program, and they do deliver 30-minute sessions once a week with the whole class, so this one is met. Um, 1B, working with the mass advocates of, for children, 100% of the West faculty have been trained on helping traumatized children learn through professional development opportunities throughout the year. West staff are using uh, trauma resources. This is one that is met, but there are continuing ongoing exploration um, opportunities for more trauma resources. Uh, West Elementary students participate in weekly box program with Mr. Powers, and that does happen on a weekly basis. And then through Stephanie Luis, the school psychologist, uh, upper elementary students participate in the peer leaders program at West, promoting wellness and strong mental health throughout the community. And this is ongoing. Um, so just moving on, um, so goal 1E, um, through Kira Grattan, fourth grade teacher at West, fourth and fifth grade students will have the opportunity to join and participate in the West Elementary Student Council. Um, we're meeting this goal and it's ongoing. 1F, um, this original goal was amended um, only for the purpose that there was different language surrounding the former Westie award format that the school used. Um, and now through the leadership of Stacy Perry and Scott Williams, the Westie Award Assemblies will reflect the POSSUM PBIS initiatives, um, positive behavior, interventions, and supports. 
Goal 1G, to enhance student and staff safety, staff members will be trained to follow ALICE safety protocols for lockdown drill exercises and Merck medical crisis drill protocols. These will be practiced through the school year. Um, we're partially meeting this goal um, for, the purpose, for the fact that we have ongoing ALICE training with more to follow in 2020. And Goal 1H, through the leadership of Laura Skeena and Darlene Bancroft, OTPT, West students will have little flower yoga sessions to promote mindfulness and positive mental health. This will be done in the general education setting as well, in as, our, as, well as with our sub-separate sub programs. Um, we're also meeting this goal, and it's being utilized across K through five with great success. Good evening. Goal two was to increase family and community engagement. 2A uh, was to fund our new kindergarten playground, uh, which we now have, and the kindergartners love it, um, my son included. Um, for that, we have we held a booster thon, the fun run in early 2019. We have another fun run coming in 2020, um, and that was a big event that raised a substantial amount of money for the playground um, with community support. So that goal is continuous as we have another fun run coming this year. 2B, um, we wanted to help fund the sidewalks for Route 80 for West students and families um, to be able to walk to school. Uh, we partnered with Safe Routes to School and held three assemblies promoting bike safety, pedestrian safety, and overall student safety. Um, we did meet our portion of the goal, which was to hold um, the assemblies. However, the town was not, as you know, offered the grant, which is very unfortunate. Um, and 2C, West Elementary will continue its partnership with PTA to continue to build out and maintain nature's classroom um, with the annual replenishment of mulch, stone gravel, and things as we do in our annual community cleanup day, which we have done annually and will continue ongoing. Hello. Um, continuing on with goal two of the family and community engagement, um, West Elementary will continue to administer the parent surveys periodically throughout the years. The last one was administered in 2017 with a favorable response. There was no survey done in 2018 and 19. However, our goal is to administer a survey in the spring of 2020. Through our PTA, Plymouth businesses and families will purchase bricks to be placed in front of the entrance at West to improve the quality of the front entrance. Um, this goal actually expired because it was a costly project. Um, so instead, we'll concentrate on a concrete entrance. Um, 2F, parent and community engagement will continue through proactive communication initiatives, including a weekly principal s'more newsletter, weekly principal blog, social media Facebook updates, connect ed phone calls, email alerts, etc. Um, this is an ongoing, um, it has been met and it is ongoing. Um, lastly, in this goal, we have community events throughout the year, including spirit days, math, game night, the fifth grade science fair, student council, the spring talent show, back to school ice cream socials, um, band and orchestra concerts, amongst many other things. Um, this also has been met and it is, um, all clubs and events are continuing and ongoing. All right, um, the third goal <coughs> is to enhance academic achievement of students at all levels. Um, the first initiative is that West Elementary will continue with response to intervention blocks at all grade levels, K through five. Um, this is done through a three-tiered system um, and students receive interventions in uh, academic areas uh, depending on the developmental needs which are in reading, writing, and or math and they, the RTI blocks take place one or two times a week at about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, in the area of MCAS ELA as well as math, um, West wanted to reduce the proficiency gap by five to ten percent by increasing the student growth percentile of the aggregate high needs and students with disabilities. Um, we're happy to report that West was the second highest performing school in Plymouth. Um, all um, state targets were exceeded um, in all of the subcategories and in both math and in English, um, substantial progress towards meeting the targets. Um, and then the fourth initiative uh, is for West Elementary um, to continue to have a data <coughs> team, and the data team consists of curriculum coaches, literacy coaches, 
classroom teachers, moderate special needs uh, teachers, administration, and together we collaborate and um, take a look at data. And this is ongoing, um, and it's being met this year. Good evening. Um, I'm going to be speaking to goal four, which is providing strong district and school leadership. Uh, 4A, uh, West Elementary principal and assistant principal will participate in instructional rounds throughout the school year, with West Elementary teachers visiting other elementary schools in Plymouth and hosting other teachers at West. The focus will be in the areas of literacy using the literacy classroom visit instrument. West teachers will travel to Hedge Elementary or other elementary schools in Plymouth to observe classrooms conducting instructional rounds twice during the academic school year. This was met. Um, I do believe you went to see Dr. Frank? Yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah. And um, Dr. Frank came to our school. Um, <coughs> he actually came through my classroom. This was nice. Um, 4B is 90% um, of our special <coughs> education students will be fully included in the general education setting, focusing on math and literacy achievement, using district assessments, demonstrating 5 to 10% growth and the students are over 90% inclusion at West. 4C, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, professional learning community model will be um, continued at West, which was established in 2013. Grade level teachers will meet and collaborate twice a month for one hour working with administration, curriculum coaches, and coordinators and other support staff uh, for um, Plymouth Public Schools. The focus will continue to be curriculum, data, and academic achievement. This was met. Um, 5D is the data team will continue at West, which was established in uh, 2016. The principal and assistant principal will serve on the team, which will convene every four to six weeks throughout the academic year. The team will consist of curriculum coaches, classroom teachers, and literacy teachers. The focus for the data work will be with Plymouth Public School District assessments in literacy and math. With statewide assessments, MCAS, student academic achievement in both disciplines will be discussed and monitored. Um, this was met as well. Uh, 4E um, was partially met. Um, the principal will continue to promote student wellness and social competency through the adoption of the second step program. Every Monday, the principal will announce the new theme for the week for students to reflect upon. Uh, 4F, through capital outlay funding, the principal will work with <coughs> the head custodian to expand the West Elementary parking lot with offenses located in the Grassy Hill area, and that was not met. So um, thank you, everybody, thank you. So the parking lot situation at West could be improved, and I know we've um, discussed this over the years when we present our school improvement plan. I also realize that we're not the only school with this need in Plymouth, so. Um, but yes, no, that has not been met. And then for the next, for the end of our presentation, I'll be speaking to goals that we established this fall when I met with Dr. Maestras over the summer, and I set my own professional goals for the school year they're not necessarily reflected in the school improvement plan that we set the prior year. But I did want to speak to these initiatives that are happening at West. So we did form a faculty senate this year. We actually met uh, this afternoon after school. We have four teacher representatives, uh, three, sorry, three teacher representatives and a paraprofessional. It's really just an opportunity for the West staff to voice concerns, have input, give me feedback about the operation of West, how the pulse of the school is, how the culture is. So it's a, a democratic approach to leadership. It's situational <coughs> leadership, empowering our staff members to have a voice. So that has been established at West. Uh, we have adopted the PBIS program, the Positive Behavior Incentive System. So the, I brought props. <laughs> so th this is a possum jar. So in our school, and this is also the new format of our Westie Assembly now. So a teacher can, students can earn their possum coins and fill their jar based on responsibility, citizenship, good behavior. It's really taking things that classroom teachers were doing individually and just making it cohesive throughout the whole school. Common language from their bus ride to their arrival in their classroom to their specialist to their lunch. To their, it, it's really continuous throughout the whole day. 
So um, this has been a very successful program. Our students are now walking the red carpet and we're acknowledging classes that get, sorry Gil, meeting a possum award. They're exhibiting welcoming, expected behavior, showing respect, thoughtful and kind, involved and effective effort. Um, it's been a big hit at West and we always announce when the kids fill their possum jar and there's lots of excitement with that. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, weekly principles, some more bulletins. So I am sending out, I used to send out a monthly publication, the West Way, but I found that that was a little bit of an archaic model when I started 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm now doing electronic bulletin weekly through the Samore system. It goes out through Connect Ed. It's shorter, <coughs> but it's richer in content. It's got more visually, visually appealing photos. And um, I think it's, parents are very busy, and I think this is a great way to keep them informed very quick. So they receive that weekly, every Thursday, electronically. Um, we have continued with enhancing and streamlining our data using our panorama system, which has been rolled out through the district this fall. Um, there's been a lot of work on that. And we also, as prior previously mentioned, we're working on our data team. Oops. Also for continued growth and achievement, um, Department of Education, MCAS. So as Shelley mentioned earlier, I'm very pleased and very happy that West performed so well last spring on the MCAS scores. It really is a tribute to the kids and their tenacity and their focus and how hard they worked and their effort and also the West teachers who really got them ready um, for the stamina that's required to perform well on the test. So I give full credit to our students and our teachers. But uh, we performed quite well there. As always, all principals, myself included, we have access to the security portal system. We are on Edwin Analytics. Over the summertime into the fall, we're all going through data. I'm meeting with the data teams. I'm meeting with my grade levels. We're going through district data, MCAS data. So data is part of the way we do business at West Elementary. Um, Mrs. Pyatt serves in our data team. So we also uh, embraced a wellness component this year at West. So we're enhancing student social emotional growth and well-being. Uh, Darlene Bancroft, who is an OTPT person at West, she's very specialized. She's gone to Little Flower Yoga training. She actually, she's kind of a guru in this area. She received multi-level certifications. I was walking through a classroom today and she was actually having the kids do deep breathing exercises <coughs> and walking throughout the classroom. So the research strongly supports that wellness and, and um, having a sense of well-being greatly correlates to a calmer student, which correlates to higher academic achievement. So we've embraced that at West this year. We are also practicing our new ALICE safety protocols, and we are, I'm, I'm sure you're all aware that this is a district in initiative, not just at West Elementary, but we sent home, I'm sorry, we didn't send home, but teachers now have a protocol sheet to follow. We've been working closely with the police department, and they've been training and meeting with us administrators and we've also put together a little bit of an assistance guide for teachers on what to do in the event of a lockdown with following the ALICE protocols. So that is a goal that's been adopted and embraced at West this year. And then new art murals. So Mrs. Kershaw, our benevolent, kind art teacher at West, has beautified our lobby area and she has plans for more murals at West. So it's really just promoting our PBS initiative, our school culture, celebrating where we are and what we stand for at West as an elementary school. The next slide is our action plan, strategic objectives. So this is an update. Oops. Here we are. So this is a, this is a Department of Education, a DESI format document. Um, and this is an update on meeting the goals for 2019 that were set. So goal one, promoting the physical, emotional, mental wellness, as I mentioned earlier, the Little Flower Yoga program has been followed and it has become part of the way we teach at West Elementary School. Focusing on the data team and MCAS performance, goal two, we have seen significant growth. Uh, we were the second highest performing school in Plymouth, uh, very happy about that. We exceeded all of our state targets that uh, we were challenged with last spring and um, we're not requiring assistance or intervention at this time. Goal three, community engagement, uh, grant funded helping traumatized children learn. We did have a guest speaker come. We had an all day uh, professional development, not this past fall, the, pa the fall prior. Uh, trauma is something that our children are facing in our school. And it's not unique to West, I, I realize that. But we have really been sensitive around helping the traumatized child and how they can access the curriculum in more positive ways. So there's been a lot of focus of that at West. 
And then goal four, our PTA partnership. I can't speak highly enough about how the PTA works tirelessly, and there are several members here tonight joining me. We can't do it alone. They really are our partners in education. I know that's a very cliche statement, but it's actually very true. We would not have our nature's classroom. We would not have our field trips. We would not have our technology. We would not have the new playground. <coughs> so I just have to give some, a shout out to our PTA because they work very hard. The next slide is, again, Department of Education. So goal one, we met that goal, the physical, emotional, and mental wellness of our students through Little Flower Yoga. Goal two, again, sorry for some of this redundancy, but again, it's just the format of the Department of Education. The data team and the MCAS focus is something that we are addressing at West. Goal three, the community engagement, grant funding helping traumatized learn, helping the child of trauma learn, and then our PTA partnership. So again, we are meeting those goals. The next slide talks about what we're gonna focus on for 2020, this year. Train and implement West staff members on new Alice safety protocols. We've had several meetings at, um, I've had several meetings with staff at West. We are having more meetings this month in January. So this is an ongoing high target goal. I mentioned the faculty senate that's been formed and that is off the ground at West. We meet once a month and we discuss issues of concern for the faculty at West. The organization and formation of the positive behavioral interventions and supports, the PBIS model, and then the electric, uh, I'm sorry, the electronic newsletter, my weekly words of Mr. Williams. And then one new initiative for this year. We are doing a one book, one school at West and we're all gonna read <laughs> James and the Giant Peach. So uh, this is something that many elementary schools do in Plymouth. West has not done this yet, so it's new for us. I've been working with Kelly Learning and Laura McBride. They are our consulting teachers of literacy. And uh, each, each child is going to be, have this book and they're going to, we're going to read it together. Mrs. Kershaw, I think, is turning our school into a giant peach. And, um, <laughs> and it's, it, we have some motiv motivations for the children because we've, we're taping ourselves read. I read chapter 18, it's on video. My dog is sitting with me as I'm reading. So I'm hoping that this will engage more literacy, more reading for our students. And so each, each teacher is going to be assigned a chapter and they're going to be reading this book. And then lastly, Well, that's it. <laughs> so um, anyway, that was a long presentation, but we are happy to take questions you might have about anything that we covered. Okay, yeah, it's a very good presentation. Very good that's initiatives, great. good results. Committee members. Hi, Ms. Haywood. Um, so I guess I just wanted to um, ask information. You mentioned that you were like a data-driven school, but I would have loved to have seen some like numbers in terms of, you said that the areas were met, but just um, just some numbers in terms of like the MCAS score and things So like how that. we actually perform? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can provide you with that. I have all the breakdown for grade level in both subject areas. Okay. Um, and then um, I guess in terms of the trauma, um, helping traumatized um, children um, learn and I guess the question is, um, like in terms of what resources, I know that there was um, education or professional development that was given, but in terms of resources and how those are like implemented. So the district is actually, actually <coughs> responding in a, in a multi-fold way. Okay. We, have in, we have a building coordinator now, I shouldn't say coordinator, a specialist social emo emotional learning growth coach. Her name is Cheryl Delory. She's been hired. We have two sub-separate programs at West. We have the Intensive Learning Center, which was formerly Life Skills, and the CARE program, which is a social emotional program. Because we house those programs, we have access to a lot of resources for mental health and well-being in Plymouth. So um, Cheryl Delory was recently hired by the district. She's actually speaking tomorrow about the traumatized child to the West staff at our staff meeting. So she's, I've met with her several times, as well as with Ms. Perry, our assistant principal. That's one resource that we have. We also have the Panorama program now, which I think will help identify those interventions at a critical stage in their development. It, uh, Panorama addresses not only academic growth, but social emotional behavior. And then there's our RTI response to intervention system, <coughs> where if a teacher 
feels that a child needs to be addressed and they need an early intervention, they can bring that to the child study team. Other, other okay. questions? Uh, when uh, when uh, that was their, the police incident on 44 last in the fall, uh, did you have to initiate the safety protocol system? We did have to initiate a lockdown. We did not follow Alice protocols. You didn't have to, okay. Okay. Dr. Campbell. Just to, to continue with the trauma and learning piece, um, we've done a lot of work for several years now with the trauma and learning policy initiative um, out of uh, Mass Advocates for Children at Harvard University. So we've partnered with them. I believe that West received a grant for that as well. So to continue that work, really looking at the ACEs study, which looks at adverse childhood experiences and how that impacts students' learning. So we've done a lot of education at all levels, really, on that and how to bring that mindset into the classroom and to help teachers with students who have experienced trauma. Because um, most students have had some <coughs> traumatic experience, yes. and the degree to which um, they've had those experiences varies, and the amount of experiences varies. So it's really important that we're all mindful of that. Um, so that we don't, um, we don't take the behaviors that are exhibited at face value and we try to get to know the students and really to, to support those kids in a very tactful, um, um, non-judgmental and supportive way. Okay, Wes, thank you so much for thank that you. presentation. <coughs> thank you very much, thank you. <coughs> So uh, we're going to take two, two small items and then we'll take a break. So we'll do the status update on the superintendent's search, please. Um, yes. Um, thank you all. And hopefully you've received the emails that we've sent out with all the information. Um, so there's a lot of info to share. So please, any questions, don't hesitate to interrupt. Um, prior to beginning, I did want to thank two individuals who helped myself with this. Um, Peg Grimes and Emily Goonan have been invaluable with their support as well. And, putting all the data together. Um, so as you all know, November we spent gathering input kind of in person with the staff and different stakeholders. December we sent out an online survey and as of today there were 403 replies. So we were happy about that. That's pretty good for one of our surveys to be honest. Um, and that data from November and December informed the information that we'll share tonight. So tonight we're really sharing two documents. Um, the first one um, Mr. Gravio just put on the screen and um, you have as well. This is really, and we have time, this is really an information item tonight. <coughs> so I'm a big timeline person and from tonight until we post the job, this can be amended and updated. So we have the next couple of weeks, we wanted to give you guys time to digest it. So this is kind of a two page um, summary of what the Plymouth School Committee is looking for. Um, it starts off with invites a student centered, passionate and innovative candidate to apply for the position. So this is kind of, this is similar to what goes out from <coughs> corporations that run searches. Um, just sums up our town. Um, we tried to highlight the areas that we think are important in the community since it's such a community focused position. And then also what are in our current strategic plan that I know we're coming to the end of. Um, a lot of time, I, being a part of the team, was put into that. So those four components of the whole child, family and community engagement, academic achievement, and leadership, those four tenants, in my opinion, came out of all the stakeholder input after reviewing all of that. So we really wanted to highlight those. Um, it continues on as describing our population, our programs. We put a focus at both high schools have vocational programs, things of that nature. Um, and then kind of the closing part on the second page is really, really what we're looking for, someone who's collaborative, a strong communicator, um, someone who understands school finance, the enormity of Plymouth. That was something that was very big in the different sessions. That <coughs> it's very different than a small school district um, and being able to delegate but have the trust but bring a strong vision. Um, so then the bottom part just has the logistics, what timeline-wise we look, would look to post on January 21st. Um, we would close February 14th, which is well beyond the typical amount of days posted. That backs right up to vacation week. Then um, we would begin paper screening the week of the 24th. And depending on everyone's involvement, we'd formalize those dates as a committee um, with myself and Peg. Um, I did ask Mr. Costin to be a part of the paper screening as well due to his expertise and years of experience. And then just my contact information for questions. Um, we also put in that the decision will ideally be made by June of this year, but the start date, that's important for a candidate to know, would be November 2020. So I'm then going to ask Kristen to click on the link. Um, 
you have a hard copy because this is lengthy and this is what we put together that um, is an electronic document we would provide it in paper for any candidates you have kind of the packet of it um, but it really is all the data we've collected we put everything in for you folks to see personally I think it's a little lengthy it needs a little bit of you know editing and taking some things out of it we took the guide if, if you don't mind clicking through it Kristen um, this kind of the first two pages are just kind of similar to that two-page document it explains our timeline it explains our draft of who we think will be on the committee just with the title a principal a two parents a student things of that nature um, and it kind of goes through the timeline then the next pages start to go into some of the survey results kind of some charts about priorities um, and again it's taking a lot of information calling it down so there's some pieces in there um, when you move forward more um, data and then we go into what the process was for the parent forum itself um, you know that I let it you folk we all let it together then we move in that just explains what it was and then I listed the guiding questions and we use those questions for the faculty as well so we really just took the the notes from Peg and put them under each because the narrative we tried not to be repetitive um, and as you click through here you'll see each of those guiding questions um, it, what are the strengths, what are the areas of priority, the notes, this again goes through what are you looking for, what prior experiences, um, and these we took from the parent, on, we got a lot from the parent online survey, a real lot. Um, and then we moved into the faculty forum, so those were just the dates they took place, um, the process, and kind of the similar model. So my opinion was we would kind of, you know, make that a little sh more brief, but tonight I wanted you folks to be able to see that, so you were able to see everything we got. Um, and then that we would um, publicize this starting the 21st through school spring. Um, I actually got a great um, price from Education Week today. Um, Dr. Maestas has actually gotten us a link with Mass Associ Association of School Committees and Mass Association of Superintendents, which I know we get those all the time in our organizations. Um, so that's kind of an update of where it's at. And if you folks have feedback, questions, input, whatever. Committee members. Yeah. Ms. Badger. If we have edits to you, just want us to give you like the sheets that we have. That yeah. Is that easier? That would be great. Mine are just purely like. Yeah, and we actually did a final update today. Okay. I was reading too many computer screens during <laughs> the holiday, so um, the one that's up there today is the most recent. Okay. But definitely share those with me, and no, I'll make those be changes. Right yep. Perfect. Absolutely. Any other committee members with questions or comments, Mr. Morgan? Um, <clears throat> do we think the November start date would be a a problem for a potential candidate or is that normal for I don't think so um, there's start dates at all different times of the year for superintendent candidates and I think whoever we were going to receive receive who will be hired for this position is gainfully employed we'd want someone gainfully employed in another position mm. and districts have dependent on the district they have longer release date so to speak like I know when dr. Campbell came to the district he had a 60 day, a 60 day. I know Wareham has a 60 day Franklin does. I know it from just teacher positions so I think it will be necessary um, and important to have that and I I think the transition will be fluid because we'll have a little time with dr. Maestas and then and I think with the budget it will work out really well because okay. that's when the budget is presented I know it was some you know teachers and some administrators yep. usually it's like July 1st and they do yeah depending but I think based on the re you, it's usually off of the retirement date of the individual so working on that we don't want to be paying double salaries either so we want to no. make sure yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> Gary but <laughs> so things like that so and I but I in my opinion it's something that the more time someone has to transition from their district because hopefully there's someone or someone within our district it's it's all dependent on them. okay so I don't think so long winded right. answer to that okay. thank you <laughs> you're welcome I have, I have two just two brief comments I, I uh, mm -hmm. you were saying this this uh, this brochure could be too lengthy I don't think it's too lengthy I think okay. it's got a lot of very important information if I yeah. was a candidate applying I would want to read every single sentence yeah. and every single word yeah I so I, I don't know if that's okay. my opinion if you want to cut it down no I the, the, the one more substantive thought that I had was on the invitation letter mm -hmm. I can't find it and if I missed it you tell me yep. there's no mention of representative town meeting I okay. think that should be in there somewhere because yep. this superintendent has to stand on town meeting floor and convince yep. The, the, the representative to yep. representatives to yep there's the finance letter. and community but I'll add a specific yeah. note it's about being the somewhere. the front person yeah. 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 yeah okay in the dr. Sorensen in the um, in the two-pager 
type yes, document, yeah, right? That's yeah. what yeah. I'm yeah. talking yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like Absolutely. To see it. it fits right oh, in there. Well, it's just town meeting, but not representative. town meeting. Yeah, I want a representative town meeting. Yeah, there's there's a difference. No, yes, definitely. I will add that. Anything else from committee members? No. Okay. Yes, Ms. Badger? No? No, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, and I think <laughs> okay, um, just yeah. kind of on the update front, um, this will inform the next topic, which is the job description. But um, I sent out two dates today, and Dr. Sorensen spoke about some people being interested. I think we're going to go with the latter dates in March because of if we want to give the candidate ample time that they have the interview. So I think it would be too brief if we scanned applications the end of February, like February 26th, 27th. I think the third, fourth, fifth might be a little too aggressive. So we'll probably look at more the end of March, the 23rd, whatever the dates were I put, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th. So okay. for those of you who are interested. The um, school committee subcommittee was going to be Ms. Badger, myself, and Ms. Burgess. Anybody else wants to do it, let me know. But I hadn't heard from anybody else. And I'll begin to put that out to parents to get, that's how we have a process with that, and then I'll keep you updated on that, and staff getting involved and things like that. So once we, if we, once we solidify those dates, which I'll say that now, um, the 24th, 25th, and 26th, and you folks can update me through Dr. Sorensen. Okay. So, but any, any changes at that? all? Yeah. If you read through it, again, this is, is pretty finalized, but there's a few little things I've seen in here. I was reading it on the screen too much, so I'm going to read through the paper. <laughs> My eyes, I'm getting old, I can tell. Um, so we'll be going through all that. But they really, there was a lot of overlap, but a lot of different things too. So I thought it was great. Um, I think the one piece that caught my eye was the bar graph, or the, I forget what one, where it said what type of leader, and it's someone to continue what we've been doing, but continue to move forward. So I thought that was great. It wasn't something who wanted status quo or a complete change agent. That came out in everything to me, looking at all the data, someone who's innovative and ready to move forward, but also continue the great type of culture we have now, so. Okay, okay. on the same topic. Yes. You sent us a copy of the superintendent's contract and you're recommending yes. some changes. Yes, this, this is the job description and the changes. The job description, yes, the changes are in red. Um, we intentionally did the survey and the input gathering prior to, then moved into the job description itself. Um, Dr. Maestas thought we should take a few things out. I'm just kidding. Uh, we spoke today. Um, but really, we did, it was actually more current than we, I thought, to be frank. Um, I added the area of, um, I do most of the collective bargaining, but Dr. Maestas is the <coughs> final say in all that in conjunction with Dr. Sorensen and you folks, so I put that in. Um, as well as, you know, supervisors all certificated and classified staff. Um, we updated the sense of humor line, which is consistent with all job descriptions. And uh, we did hear loud and clear from the teachers they wanted someone who had teaching experience as well as an administrator, so we made sure that was in there. But the administrative capacity experience was big. Um, and we, I did make sure it said a valid superintendent's license, not licensable, that's not where, you know, not, you know, someone who definitely has that license in place is a big criteria for us. So I don't know if there's anything we missed. The, what's nice about the job description is it's very general. Um, when you look at things, it's, you know, reviewing the entire budget in collaboration with the Mr. Costin and the overall financial planning collaboratively with the school committee in presenting the budget to the community stakeholders, things like that. So it was more current than I, I hadn't looked at it in a long time, so. Committee members, Ms. Badger. I, on number, the, the first section where it says five, number five, uh -huh. um, where you have at the end it says and with the larger educational community, yeah. I am just wondering if we just want to put and with the larger community or with the community. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just the educational piece of the yeah. town. That's, yep. That's our standard line. Yeah. That I call it the I Dennis Begley line. <laughs> Lucky when, I remember when that change was made when I was a principal. So that's yeah, fine. I just think, it's I think that makes sense. His or her role. It is whoever. such a community base. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good. And, and then my other um, question is if we wanted to add in a bullet, and I know you do it in here mm -hmm. um, in the job description or yeah. whatever this is referred yeah, the to as. Brochure, I guess. Uh, brochure, thank you where someone, maybe a bullet about thinks and acts creatively to provide or enhance programs or to save money or something, yeah. something where, where we have, I feel like our district has done that for so long yeah. um, under like the solar know, project team. And, yeah. yeah, that I think that maybe putting that in the job description is kind of important okay. because, you know, that I, personally, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then there's, you mentioned your role in that mm -hmm. updated bullet, yep. but then we don't ma like mention the school business administrator, mm -hmm. so I don't, in certain aspects, so I didn't yep. know if we just, yep. what the best way would be to handle that mm -hmm. line, if we should be putting in the appropriate probably should. Yeah, we probably put both of us. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <coughs> Two of us. We spend a lot of time together, Mr. Yeah. Costner. <laughs> capital letters, all capital business. <laughs> That's a great suggestion. Not yet for me. And I've read it so many times, I don't know if there's anything else I'm missing, so if mm. so, um, what we could do is I could come up with a, um, a I agree that we, I come up with another sentence, probably not right at this moment, but mm -hmm. I could send it out to you folks, but we could vote on it to, uh, with, under the assumption that, you know, this line is agreeable to folks, just because I want to keep on the timeline, that's the only piece with adding that additional um, performance responsibility. Ms. Hayward. Um, just with line 17, when you negotiate yep. all um, collective bargaining agreements and mm -hmm. unaffiliated contracts is appropriate. So is, <coughs> is that different from now or? No, nope. I mean, it just like wasn't in, in there and it's a big part of the job. Um, I know how much time we spent. We have about 40 um, unaffiliated contracts. All, no principals can be on a collective bargaining agreement. So I think there's a lot of that that goes on in the superintendent's role. And I thought it was something that was missing, knowing how much, you know, I do it in conjunction with Dr. Mastis, but he does a lot of that. That's his primary role. Like when he, Mr. Williams said he spoke to him about his goals and whatnot, that's directly linked to his contract as a principal. So, because our principals are evaluated based on their goals and things of that nature. So, um, so it just wasn't in there. I don't know why it wasn't in there, but I mean, Carly caught my eye because it's all I do is contracts. So, um, and anything that comes up with um, collective bargaining agreements um, in regards to if there's ever a grievance or arbitrate, those are all involved with, you know, I facilitate, but, but Dr. Maestas is the final say on that. Has, has there been some dialogue, and I, and I really mm -hmm. don't have a strong opinion. I see you say uh, uh, coursework beyond the master's. Has mm -hmm. there been dialogue about whether or not there should be a requirement of a doctorate? Yep, there has. There's been every side. Has there been comments that, and you'll see in the brochure it says doctorate preferred, um, doctorate required. People have asked for that. Some people have said the best person for the job, dependent on their qualifications and who they are as a person. And people seem very focused on who the, as they should be, you know, who the individual is. Um, but that was one of the guiding questions was kind of asking that. What qualifications do you envision? Um, and it's come out on both sides of the equation. I've heard both on both sides. Do many members have an opinion on that? I like how it's worded in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, um, you just don't want to preclude yourself from looking at someone else. Um, okay. If it's a tie, obviously, the tie goes to the person with the doctorate. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on that? No. Okay. I could see an yeah. argument on both sides. Yeah. And I think the big piece, number six on the qualifications, always gives you some wiggle room within all the alternatives. Such alternatives to the above <coughs> may find appropriate and acceptable. So you always have that. And there's something at the bottom of, um, yeah, about as well at the bottom of the responsibilities. So this is an action. <coughs> Excuse me. This is an action item, uh, and I think we should take a vote on it with uh, with the recommended changes. Yeah. Yep. What does the committee I feel? Get that. Just because I think our next meeting is until the 27th, <coughs> yeah. so yeah. I think we'd like to get it out before then, based right. on everything. Mr. Morgan. I uh, make a recommendation to approve the uh, job description with the uh, uh, recommended changes by uh, Ms. Badger. Thank you. Seconded by Ms. Badger. Any other questions? Okay, we can vote on this. And again, a thank you to Ms. Grimes and Emily who've been sick of listening to me. So <laughs> I think it's very helpful. Okay, everybody voted in favor. Thank you, Ms. Fry. Okay, we're going to take a, uh, what time? We'll take a, uh, maybe a eight minute break and come back here at uh, 840, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're back in session, everybody. Thank you so much for that prompt break. And now we are going to do old business. Uh, can any members want to bring up anything from the old business uh, list this evening? <clears throat> I'm not seeing any hands. Is there new business from the committee members this evening? 
Again, I'm not seeing any hands. So moving on then. Uh, superintendent's report. Dr. Maestas. Yes, this evening I have uh, two items to report on. Um, I know a, a, a few meetings back, maybe three meetings back, we discussed um, the topic of a consolidation. And as of today, I, I, I have not had word from uh, the select board or uh, the town manager's office as to what uh, direction um, that is or what state that is um, as far as con uh, conversation, communication regarding that. So I did have some uh, indication that that was going to be tabled. Uh, but I do not have an official word on that. Uh, as soon as I find that information, Thank I you. will relay it to the committee, uh, and we can go from there, and I will try to get some more information for us. Um, another reminder that we have for you, and I think Ms. Grimes has sent this out to you, January 14th, uh, the select board is having a joint meeting with the fa finance committee for a select and school committee. So if you could mark your calendars, that's an important meeting, and that's really uh, the annual uh, joint meeting. So. A variety of topics could come up, budget, et cetera, don't know. So um, tomorrow night, the Board of Selectmen will be reviewing, uh, and uh, it's their uh, official um, hearing and, and vote uh, tomorrow night. Um, a department heads are not attending. If I'm asked to attend tomorrow night, I will attend, but otherwise it will be the Board of Selectmen and the town administration will be there to answer questions. Um, but as of, as of now, um, I will not be there, and, I'm, and my staff will probably not be there as well. So I uh, just want to let you know that that's a process, very typical this time of the year. It's a long road between now and April town meeting. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any questions to the superintendent following his report? <coughs> Retirements, Ms. Fry. Um, yes, we have one retirement to report tonight. Um, Sandra Patrician, cafeteria team leader for 23 years of service, um, Cold Spring Elementary School. On behalf of Plymouth School Committee, I would like to thank Ms. Oh, I just switched to the next thing and I had a road down. Ms. Patrician, is that her last name? I can go back. I can go back. Um, no, that's okay. I, I know what to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> for her years of service and wish her a happy retirement. Thank you very much. Reports and proposals from committee members. Ms. Badger. I would say this on behalf of Ms. Haywood and I. We are both on, as you all know, on No Place for Hate. And on January 20th, we would like to invite all of you to attend the Martin Luther King Bre Breakfast and Unity Celebration at Plymouth South High School. It's from 8 to 10.30, and we've got Reverend Jeffrey Brown. And if you haven't seen his TED Talk, you can see it on our Facebook page. I posted it there. Um, and tickets are $12, but we need to know by January 9th that you'll be there so that we can have the count. So we hope you can all make it. Okay, thank you for that report. Good. Reports and proposals, committee members, other items? Okay. <coughs> PYDC, is there a report, Dr. Campbell? Um, you would have received a pretty detailed uh, summary of the meeting from December 13th. Uh, I, don't, I won't go through all of it. I could perhaps highlight a few things. Uh, we had some discussion about the uh, recent vaping ban uh, for quite some time. Um, as you know, that, that vaping was banned for several months, and um, what continues after that ban has been lifted is um, the THC vaping paraphernalia will continue to be um, banned for the, for the time being. <coughs> um, one thing that was important to note was uh, Kelly Doyle, who is a member of the Cannabis Control Commission, will be meeting on Wednesday, January 8th from 845 to 1015 at the Medical Office Building at BID. Um, so that's an open meeting, and uh, people are invited to, to hear what she has to say um, about where things are with that. Um, we had a lot of discussion about interface. Um, you may recall that we received a grant to um, provide this interface service to the entire Plymouth community at large. So what it essentially is is a service that um, an 800 number where someone who's maybe experiencing mental health issues or has a family member that's experiencing mental health issues and needs support but doesn't know where to go. Um, they're assigned a case manager that will help them pro go through, um, you know, a lot of that, the, the minutia that may prohibit people from seeking support. So this person that is assigned to them, help them find some um, immediate mental health supports, uh, not inpatient, but outpatient 
supports um, and continue with them and, and they can come in back and forth so if the clinician that they're working with isn't successful they have an opportunity to, to, to reach back. Um, anecdotally it's been very well received I know that our schools utilize it quite a bit um, as well as many of the members of PYDC some of the agencies talked about how successful that's been so we're really happy to have that grant to provide support to, to any Plymouth community member so that's really good um, we had an update provide Healthy Plymouth wasn't represented we had an update from Healthy Plymouth um, Healthy Plymouth does a lot to provide a lot of healthy <coughs> opportunities for our community as you all know um, one thing to, to point out is the amazing race which was held in October happy to say that they uh, they um, they raised thirteen thousand dollars in, in donations and in kind goods and services valuing over three thousand dollars from that nice. so it's great it's a great um, a great day um, let's see what else uh, Preventure Preventure was um, very successful that took place December 11th I think was the first day and then you had it the following week um, we continue to do that, getting really good results. Dr. Myasis can speak to that better than anyone else. So we're just really happy to have that opportunity and that partnership with um, BID uh, Plymouth as well. Um, and that's about it in terms of major highlights. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> Building committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we are meeting <coughs> this Thursday. So we have, um, we have not had a meeting since our last meeting, but we are meeting this Thursday. Okay. Personnel. Um, yes, we have one certificate ap certificated appointment, um, three coach and <coughs> advisor appointments, um, two leaves of absences for short-term maternity, and two resignations. Okay, thank you for that report. Any questions from committee members? Accounts payable, Ms. Hunt. Whereas school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and warrant for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the report and accounts payable warrant number S010920, dated January 9th, 2020, in the amount of $1,153,542.58 as presented. Is there a second to that motion? Mr. Morgan is the second. Is there a question on that motion? Okay, we can vote. Now we have the grants and revolving funds warrant. Ms. Hunt. Okay. I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the grants and revolving funds warrant number G010920, dated January 9th, 2020, in the amount of $100,228.93 as presented. Is there a second to that motion? Ms. Badger is the second. Is there a question on that motion? Okay. <coughs> we can vote for it or against it. <laughs> and that is unanimous. Thank you, everybody. We have the minutes of November the 4th. What's the pleasure of the committee? <clears throat> Ms. Badger. I move we approve the minutes as presented. Seconded by Mr. Morgan is the second. Any questions on the minutes of November the 4th? Okay, we can vote for those. And that is unanimous. And now we have some obsolete printed material. Dr. Maestas? Yes, tonight we have a number of uh, testing <coughs> protocols um, and uh, obsolete equipment materials, uh, and excuse me, obsolete books from Cold Spring Elementary. This is from the Special Education Department. And uh, this has been reviewed by the Special Education Department as they've been deemed unusable. And I recommend approval of this item. Motion, regard the obsolete equipment. Books, Mr. Morgan. I'll make a motion to approve the recommendation of administration to dispose of the obsolete books. Thank you, seconded by Ms. Badger. Question to the motion? No questions, time to vote. And everybody has voted in favor of disposing of that equipment. <coughs> Is there any other business to come before the school committee tonight?
Okay. With that, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.